Welcome to TotalCast with your hosts, Alexander McKegg and Jason Rigby, where humanity steps into the future and source data defines the path. The path. This um, feels good working from home. Yeah. Working from home's nice. Yes. The, the remote. There's pros and cons to it, though. There are pros and cons to it because the second. What's, he, he, here's, here's, the, here's the rub. When COVID hit, people are like, we got to get people out of the office. Well, all the processes and activities and everything were siloed. Mm-hmm. They were centralized. And then when you spread out your labor force, it all became decentralized. Right. So you want to make sure that you begin to transition your tools the tools and the processes that people had into a decentralized manner. You want to make sure that things are efficient and secure and really all of the work, the risk that could be managed in a centralized format, you have to have something step in and now manage it for you in a decentralized format. And there are some AI algorithms put into analytical tools and workflow processes that can actually benefit a lot of companies to do that. So whenever we look at data specifically, I want to stay with the work at home because I know there's a lot of people that listen to this that are that are having to work at home now. Mm-hmm. And some of them are enjoying it, some are not. I know that they're wanting to, once the vaccine comes out, maybe even create a hybrid model. Some people are looking at- People like to have a place to go. Right. Like people like to be able to go home. Right. People like to be able to go to work and like leave it there. And now you begin to like blend those things. So is it, is it that hybrid model is like a little bit more of like a hybrid life? I think, uh, I don't know how you, the culture is with <laughs> Tartle, um, but, you know, Google and in a lot of these places, Adobe's doing it. Twitter just, you know, announced that they're all at home now. I know Snapchat's doing it, you know, all these different tech companies. But um, it's this ability to be able to self-manage yourself. Yeah. You know, and I and take 100% responsibility. You know, I work at home, you work at home, you know, and, and we work a lot. But um, but that's something internally inside of me. Yep. It's not like, you know, and it, but if I didn't have a passion for Tartle and want to see, you know, it grow, if I was just an employee, mm-hmm. how how much taking advantage of that? Of like being at home and you, like you can you can literally, effort. it's like people that I always talk to my friends that retire and they're like, I'm more busy now than I was. It's like, you know how things can just consume your life? Of course. And you have to be careful. I have to be careful with that. You yeah. know, it's like, okay. Well, you know, I was busy for this afternoon, so I got to make it up tonight. You, you know what I mean? In yeah, my no, work, I, so. I absolutely hear that. You, uh, you know, it's, um, you have, there's a lot of self-reflection with working from home. Yes. And the question is, can you hold yourself accountable when no one's watching? Like when you, if you're going to the office, you know, you're always feeling like, oh, hey, you know, so I put that on do not disturb. You put, you feel like, you know, uh, big brother's there. Mm-hmm. You know, or someone's watching the IT network, and so I can't be doing this or going on this website. Well, now you have the freedom to do it. And when you're doing it, you're wondering, is this the best use of time? Right. You know, and so I think that what we find is that when we do work from home or like that sort of workforce, is that there's going to be a transition with the companies by using um, a lot of automation now. So (laughs) that the only thing that's left is no longer a you know the monotonous process of moving a document from here to here. Right. All that sort of stuff that can be automated, you're going to see it being automated. So the effective time of people being at home, working from home, is going to be focused more on the creative, the creative aspect of work, the more scientific, intellectual thinking part of doing work, rather than. 85% of the workday just be, you know, moving documents around. Yeah. And, and when you look at, uh, and they use an example in the article um, with the, that, uh, a consumer bank with the stimulus checks. Yeah. So instead of having a whole office of people to field calls, asking if someone got a stimulus check, there's computer systems that are analyzing what you're saying and then just checking in for you. And so that monotonous task that might've taken somebody eight hours over the course of the day, that labor of that individual can now be focused on things that are really important. Yeah. And I know we're seeing, especially with support, uh, and they were talking about this and then everything shifting to the cloud is chatbots. 
Yeah, chatbots are really helpful. And when you use AI and the more people that begin to interact with chatbots, the more accurate they become in their responses. Yeah, I know. We just set one up um, for a dealership and it um, allows you to be able to put your VIN number in. I'm going to ask you questions and then it, you can put your VIN number in or your year make and model yeah. of your trade in. Yeah, that's good. And then cool. it gives you a quote and then tells you what other places are, you know, so so now you just got an answer to put a puzzle piece together. Yeah. And it's doing and it's doing it for it. And then to make that become full circle, you know, a lot of people that go to work, you know, it's like, okay, I have to be here from nine to five. You're not doing something yes. from nine to five. You know, the day is broken up. So when we look at that sort of hybrid model and when AI begins to kick in now that, you know, work is becoming decentralized, now it's like, well, how much time do I actually put in towards working? And it opens up the availability of you doing other things for your life, other freedoms. And then you have actually now a concentrated, you know, three or four hours of doing something that requires an intellectual concentration rather than just a monotonous task. And I think that's the interesting change in the dynamic as people start to see where the value sits in their labor and how much time really needs to go in to effectively get something done rather than just say, I have to be here from nine to five. Right. And so I'm just thumbing around doing something. Yeah. Cause what would they say that the average person going to a nine to five job, they, they average like an hour and a half worth of total work. That, that's exactly what I mean. And the majority of the stuff is monotonous. Right. And if we can take AI to continue to push forward in these decentralized systems and take care of these tasks that right. we really don't need to be doing. We can, we really can focus on things that are more important. And I think that companies as they begin to adopt, you know, very data forward um, tools and workflows, they're going to see great benefits in creativity, happiness of the workforce, and also, you know, productivity in general, people will be working less hours, but they're going to be more concentrated and effective. So do you think when, whenever you see people uh, and you see this, do you think this will be even once we get past the pandemic? Because here's what I'm worried about. I think the world is better off with people with a hybrid model or working at home or whatever. I, yeah. think, I think it creates a better balance for life, especially in our industry, the tech industry. Yeah. You know, there's people say work-life balance. Right. It's, it should be life-work balance. Yes, yes. You should invert how that's actually said. You know, it's all about quality of life. Yes. And if we can have a, a, a higher quality of life by passing off things that machines should be doing to a machine, I think that's a really good way to look at the hybrid model for how work should be done in the future. Well, I know. I, I know like at noon, you're fixing to go climb. Yeah. You know, you're a climber. And so you're going to go to a climbing gym and climb a wall. Um, one thirty, I'm going to a gym, yep. you know, so I, I would, I would have to schedule this after five o'clock. You, you know what I mean? If I work nine to five at a place. So I, I think the quality is a key word. Um, and when in, especially when employers are looking at, you know, once we get the vaccine or we have herd immunity or whatever, you know, should I go back to the old ways of doing things? And I say, why? Yeah, why? Why, why you... have the traffic? Why have the environmental impact? The world's moving decentralized. Yes. You know, all of your systems, workflows, tools, it's all becoming decentralized. Why would you then be, come back and centralize people? It, it wouldn't, it, it's, not, it's, it's a, what it's, is the point of having right. people in an office? Well, philosophically, it doesn't match with, like you said, the decentralized world. Amazon will bring a package to my door. I don't yeah. have to go to the UPS store to pick my package up. No, I don't. They'll just do it. And so it's like, why would you, why would you step backwards? Why do I have to, even though I work for you, you know, my, my mind shift is why do I have to go to an off your office to get you stuff know, done? You know, I've it's, been it's that it, old mentality. If I've been getting it done at the house, why do I need to go do it here? Or, or, and, and I think when you hire and like Tardo, when you hire great people yep. to do an amazing job and they have personal responsibility with inside themselves, mm -hmm. Um, and they're passionate about what they're doing because they see the future, then there's no issue with this. No, there's no issue. We know at Tartle in our culture, there's a job that has to be done. We got to go do it. Right. If you need to take time off, take it off. I don't need you to sit around nine to five and try and like, you know, do something. Right. It's like, here's the effective job. Let's go attack it. Right. And we know when we got to get it done by. Yes. So whatever you have to do with your personal life, go do it. If you need to go work out to make yourself feel better, go do that. 
If you got to take two days off, fine. But we know what our deadline is. Yes. Yeah. And I think a great book that will help people out, one that <clears> helped me out, it's, uh, I think the guy's name is Cal Newport. I'm not for sure. But the book, if you type it in Amazon, it's called Deep Work. Yeah. And it's a really good bo- book about um, plugging your phone somewhere else, you know, putting on some music that doesn't have words in it, you mm-hmm. know, so that, will, Trance. you know, that, that's what I use, but um, EDM type music. But, um, you know, for me, it's being able to get at least two hours of focused work where I'm just hammering it away for two hours. There's and then a- I take a break. Some people use timers, you know, there's, there's websites for that, but. I just know I have an, in, you know, like an internal clock. I'm like, I am done right now. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I I'm am like too. Yep. That's it. I got to go do something to reset and then I can go back to that. Workflow. Yes. Yeah. That's why, cause I like, uh, so I break, broke my day up. I have a morning t- uh, morning time where I work and then I take a break usually at lunch or whatever. Yeah. And then I work in the afternoon and then I work in the evening. So, yep. I mean, that works for me. I'm single. So, um, but, uh, in between that I'm doing things to reset myself and think about all the systems that you use. Right. We at Tartle use a ton of different systems. And we're trying to do what we can to automate that stuff, right. our processes, so that you know it becomes effective. And then your two hours of focus are on things that need to be focused on rather right. than a monotonous task. More of a macro than a micro, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so I think AI and machine learning algorithms put into these tools, you know, having computers take over when they should, I think what we're going to find is that it'll make, it's essentially going to make work more effective. Yes, you know, and I think it'll actually make people a lot happier rather than having to do those, you know, I'm going to move this paper here to here, you know, this thing to here to here, like it's going to make a big change. And I think what we've seen in 2020 with those tools that afford artificial intelligence and the decentralized systems are going to only expand further into 2021. And we're going to see an increase in the quality of life through that work-life balance. Speaking of quality of life and effectiveness. Our sponsor, Tartle.co. <laughs> Our only sponsor. <laughs> because this is Tartle.co. Because <laughs> this is. <laughs> it's so funny when it, whenever I put the podcast in um, uh, to put to get it out to all the areas, it, it, you always have the author as Tartle. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's like, yep. We self-author, we self-cite, <laughs> we do all these different things. So our one and only ever sponsor, Tartle.co. Tartle.co, and you can sign up at T-A-R-T-L-E dot C-O, get started and you can start sharing your data towards causes you care about, and then you can get compensated for doing so. Phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah, very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to Tartlecast with your hosts, Alexander McKegg and Jason Rigby, where humanity steps into the future. And source data defines the path. What's your data worth?